Hello friends and welcome to this, your guide to the most haunted, horrifying and downright hellish places on earth. In these videos we talk you through some of the spookiest tales and urban legends from towns and cities across the world, and today we're going to be exploring six of the most horrifying haunts in Al Riki, Edinburgh, Scotland. Number 1. Edinburgh Castle Arguably Edinburgh's most famous site, the Royal Castle has stood in the city since the 12th century and has witnessed many a conflict through the years. So understandably, it comes with a plethora of paranormal reports surrounding it. In the basement I saw potatoes and some dried pasta and a few tins of tuna. One of the castle's most famous spooks is the ghostly piper, who was reportedly sent into the tunnels underneath the castle a few hundred years ago to explore but never returned. Ever since, there's been reports of unseen bagpipes playing below the castle and around the city's famous Royal Mile. Of course, the castle's dungeons also have their own share of supernatural entities, owing to the litany of prisoners who were tortured and killed whilst imprisoned at the castle in the past. One of these prisoners, who attempted to escape in a wheelbarrow full of manure, allegedly haunts the battlements, and has even been said to attempt to push visitors down to Castle Rock. People can usually avoid the ghost attacks, though, as he's reported to give off a foul smell before he appears. Number 2 West Bow West Bow West Bow The West Bow between Victoria Street and Grass Market was once home to Major Thomas Weir, known as the Wizard of West Bow, and was the most feared house in the city. The enigmatic Weir was executed in 1670, following multiple convictions, including bestiality, incest, and necromancy. The house lay empty after his death, but locals swore the windows were often illuminated at night and passed over by ominous shadows with unsettling music emanating from inside the building. Reportedly, on more than one occasion, an infernal carriage was witnessed outside the abandoned house, being drawn by six fiery horses. Although it was thought that the house was demolished in 1878, it was recently discovered that parts of the structure survived and are now incorporated into the Quaker Meeting House on Victoria Terrace. It's precisely because of the haunted bones of that old house, lingering still in the shell of another building, the hauntings are still reported to this day in this lively district of Edinburgh. Number 3 William Brodie is often compared to Thomas Weir by those familiar with the occult underbelly of Edinburgh society. Brodie, much like Weir, was a well-respected member of society, known as a cabinet maker and a deacon of a trades guild. However, again like Weir, he led a wicked and gruesome hidden life, which started when he copied the keys to a bank. Brodie would go on to steal hundreds of pounds from the bank, which he would spend supporting his family, quite noble, and his five separate mistresses, not quite so noble. Brody managed to keep his separate lives secret for several years, but his pernicious side business was eventually tipped off to the police and William tried to make his escape before the authorities came for him. He fled as far as Amsterdam before being caught and extradited to the UK, where he was found overwhelmingly guilty and sentenced to the death by and sentenced to death by hanging. It's alleged that Brody tried to survive his hanging by bribing the executioner and using his carpentry skills to tamper with the scaffold, but if he did try this, it didn't work, and he was executed as planned. Once the, 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 Soon after his body was committed to the earth, sightings of his lingering spirit... Soon after his body was committed to the earth, sightings of his lingering spirit began to come in. Soon after his body was committed to the earth, the sightings of his lingering spirit began to come in. Today, Junior! Particularly around his workshop and family home in Brodie's Close, sightings which persist to this day. Many of the sightings claim he is accompanied by a flaming horse, possibly linking him to the ghastly cavalcade that appears in Westbow. Number 4. Edinburgh Playhouse The Playhouse opened more than 80 years ago, originally as a cinema, and is now the largest working theatre in the entire UK. Unsurprisingly, seeing as it's an old theatre, it has its very own ghost. Affectionately known as Albert by the staff, this spectre always appears on the sixth floor, garbed in all grey and accompanied by a chilling drop in temperature. Although Albert's true identity is unknown, 
the two most popular theories are that he was either a stagehand who died in a tragic accident, or, more morbidly, he was a night watchman who took his own life. Number 5. Greyfriars Kirkyard. Found looming over the southern edge of the old town district, Greyfriars Kirkyard was established in 1562 and has been regarded as the most haunted place in the city basically ever since. From the moment the first soul was put to rest here in the 16th century, a number of notable people have been buried here, including James Sterling, Alan Ramsey and Harry Munro. Among the famous residents is Greyfriar Bobby, a dog beloved by the city and known for holding a loyal vigil over the grave of his master for over a When Bobby himself finally left this Vale of Tears, he was buried on an unconsecrated patch of land inside the cemetery gates. And to this very day you can hear Bobby's disembodied bark in the graveyard, with some passers-by even claiming to see the deceased dog. Arguably the most famous ghost in the graveyard is that of George Mackenzie, a renowned barrister and law writer. Mackenzie's body lies in a large black mausoleum inside the cemetery and countless reports of malicious poltergeist-like activity have been reported around it over the years, with some people even claiming to be knocked to the ground by the troublesome spirit. There's a story from the 90s that a homeless man broke into the mausoleum looking for shelter. When inside, the man decided to indulge in a spot of grave robbing, forcing open a number of coffins in the structure looking for valuables. When he came to Mackenzie's coffin, however, he said that before he could rip it open, a sinkhole appeared beneath him and the pilfering pauper was dropped into a pit filled with bones of plague victims that had been tossed into a mass grave. Seeing as the victim in this instance was something of a despicable criminal himself, we can chalk that up as a rare good deed from the grumpy ghost of George Mackenzie. And that about wraps it up for this look at six of the most haunted places in Edinburgh. If you learned something new today, I don't mean from our video, I mean just in life, why don't you give us a like? And if you learned absolutely nothing, in fact you forgot something, why not give us a dislike? Probably our fault. Let us know in the comments what you thought of the video, any ghost stories or urban legends you have in your area, or where you'd like us to cover next. Subscribe for more spooky content in the future, follow us on Twitter, at SpatulaTwisted for updates and to get in touch, and as always, stay safe out there.